One of the events I'm doing for this lovely summer is the Summer of Sport. I've been concentrating and I meant to concentrate mostly on Westerns for the first month because I have all summer for sport and Star Trek, two things that are very related by being uh, completely unrelated uh, in that people who play sports don't like Star Trek and people who, who watch Star Trek don't like sports. That's, a, that's obviously an exaggeration. Um, but after reading the Oxbow incident, which I've now mentioned in four videos, it's a, it's a pretty heavy book. It's a deep book. I really wanted something lighter and I wanted something in, in a different mode and it is good to always keep a few things like that around for emergencies. Uh, what I found is this book by Victor Canning. Mr. Finchley discovers his England. Uh, he's riding a, a, a bicycle. So uh, when I went through everything that I owned to see what could possibly fit sport, I found very little. I found enough things to go on though. Um, I thought this guy's riding a bicycle. Uh, Elv uh, I do this every single time. Mark at Book Time with Elvis uh, mentioned in his original uh, introduction video for the for summer sport, which is an event he created. You know, he mentioned you know different ways you could approach it. He mentioned one of his favorite books, one of my favorite books, Three Men in a Boat, uh, which I do have, but I've read before. Um, so I thought, well, okay, here's a chap. I'm sorry, I'll try not to do. Uh, my my fake Britishisms throughout this video, but uh, I'll try and make that the last one anyway. Here's a here's a gentleman. Here's a guy. Here's a, here's a dude who is uh, riding a bicycle in a suit, and he sort of and it's this book was written in I believe it was published in 1940. Its author was only was very very young. He. He, I think he was 23. He had a, a long career. I think he published his first book at age 19. He ended up writing a lot of thrillers, but this was a big bestseller for him. Um, it's kind of in that vein. This is a middle-aged man who goes on vacation for the first time in his life. He's 45. He's single. He's, you know, a kind of a, a, a kind of a type from a British comic uh, fiction, the confirmed bachelor fellow. Uh, he's, he's very, uh, you know, in, in uh, it's going to say enthusiastic, but you know, he's happy to be on vacation. This is not a bad thing for him. He's very uh, happy that his boss was kind enough to give him a vacation, the first vacation he's had in his life since he was 17 years old, doesn't really know what to do, figures to explore the world a bit, gets immediately into adventures. Quite delightful, cannot fail the charm. Daily Telegraph got it right on that. It's very charming. It's very, very light. It was a big bestseller at the time, I believe, which you can just imagine. 1940, I hope I'm right on that date. You know, just, uh, just written right before World War II started, coming out just as World War II began, uh, you know, in 1939 for, the, for in Europe. You can imagine something like this really having broad appeal. This is not deep literature or anything. It's very charming. He gets in, you know, comic fixes. Some are more uh, funnier than others. There's a touch of romance at the end, leading to what we believe is a happy ending. Um, what I'm sure is a happy ending, having looked ahead to the, there's two other books in this trilogy. Uh, Mr. Finchley goes to Paris, I think the second one's called, and M Mr. Finchley hits the road. Uh, just really nothing bad to say about it. If you like books like, um, you know, if you like P.J. Woodhouse, if you like uh, Jerome K. Jerome, that kind of thing, um, it's, it's in that vein. It's um, quite delightful as the Daily Telegraph says. I don't know what else to say. I should probably just cut it here. Um, I, I do recommend if you're looking for something light, 
I don't remember how long ago I bought it, quite a while. I see it's uh, still up on Kindle for only $1.99, something like that. The next one's in the, what, what this publisher's done is they have uh, they've sort of cobbled together a series called the Victor Canning Classic Series or something like that, which, uh, oh, which includes these three Finchley novels, but also includes other early novels um, by the same author. Um, as opposed to what he ended up being known throughout his life was uh, uh, thrillers and like uh, uh, crime thrillers and like spy thrillers and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if he's more well known in England today or not. I had never heard of him before that, but I really enjoyed it. I would read, I'm going to read the other two at, at some point. Um, I could just read the reviews here. There's he got a really a lot of reviews at the time. Apparently, uh, he was able to quit his job. This guy, there he is, the young fellow. Uh, oh, sold several short stories and a first novel. Oh, I am way off on the eight, on the time. Okay, Mister Finchley discovers his England was uh, published in nineteen. 1934 when he was 23 so six so five years before the war began so in the de in the depths of the depression uh, you know uh, anything after 1933 is is already uh, the time the the beginning of, of fascism growing in Europe so I think probably people knew that was going on and this would be a uh, uh, I can really see the the appeal of that kind of book, and it's got the same kind of appeal today for people who are stressed about the world political situation and, and everything and thinking how bad things are and how bad they're going to continue to be. And, and they'll probably be okay. But even if they aren't okay, at least you can read a book like this once in a while and you know escape for a couple hours. That's what I would do. There's a hilarious section in there. Uh, my favorite section is probably when he takes, he 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 uh, he grows a bit of a back. He's not like a, a wimp or anything like that, but he he does find depths in himself. Uh, he's at one point he needs money and he takes and it, uh, he gets a job for one day at a gas station pumping gas. Uh, for six shillings while, you know, as a substitute for the regular guy who's supposed to be there. And he just treats it like an adventure, you know. That's why uh, the book is so appealing in many ways, is that he just treats everything that happens to him like an adventure instead of inconvenience. Um, you know, he's an office worker. He's never worked with his hands or anything. He's, like, getting it all together and, you know, doing that. The boss is really uh, mean to him and everything. And he just treats it like a... You know, it's part of his vacation, and he you know has this day, and it's got a very satisfying conclusion to that sec section, and he has a lot of little adventures, but like that, that was one of the funniest and one of my favorites. So, again, I recommend it. Uh, it besides the bicycling, which there is not very much, I did happily find out that he, in one of the later chapters, he pitches one inning, or he bowls one inning. I don't know what is the person who throws the ball in cricket called the bowler. Anyway, so there's an inning or two of cricket. He he joins the game for some reason. Can't remember why. They they think he's gonna uh, mess it up, but he, but he you know he does fine. Everything he does fine. It's one of those kind of books where he gets in a little bit of a fix. It turns out it's all right. So there was cricket in here. I have other books with cricket in them, which I'm gonna read for summer sport. Just happen to have English novels. Uh, I do understand cricket a little bit because of the movie, some movie called, that Indian movie, is it called Lan Lagan from like 2000, early 2000s, Lagan, it's a great movie, it's, you know, it's a Bollywood movie, it's about three hours long, it's about this village that, that uh, during uh, the occupation, or the Raj uh, with British uh, colonial time, British occupied India during the Raj, I think it was called, right? There's a town uh, where the, the, the young hero makes a bet with the evil British colonel 
uh, for a cricket match, and and if if the townspeople, the Indian townspeople, win the cricket match, they they can live tax free. They will have no taxes for three years. It's a fantastic movie. You can go in knowing no cricket, and then have a pretty good sense of of the game by the end of it. At least I did when I saw it a long time ago. So I'll put that in the notes too as something to. Watch out for if you happen to run across a lot of cricket novels in this coming summer of sport, and I hope you do. And I just the other day heard on YouTube, on someone's notice somewhere, I apologize, I don't remember who, said that the United States cricket team beat the Pakistani team, which is quite a... Quite an upset. So I'm going to pretend that um, I'm a really big cricketer fan for the moment. And, and we'll see where that takes us.